That means no. Next question. Yes, sir. 23 years of Halloween Horror Nights. Why did it take so long for American Horror Nights? Well, be because John Landis was incredibly difficult to convince. <laughs> No, actually, actually, it, 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 we've been in conversations about American Werewolf for several years. It, it was a passion project. Uh, you know, and, and John was hard to convince um, to, to come play with us. But I think it was good that, that it took time because, you know, one of the things that does set us apart, and, and Scotty asked this question earlier about what makes Halloween Horror Nights different from every other experience in the world. We talked about kind of the commitment and the, the, the talent and what Universal does. One of the things that we really do really well, I think, is we work with the filmmakers and the, the IP holders and, the, and the, the people that make the games and make the motion pictures and make the television series. We reach out to the, the creators. We want them involved with us. We know how to do Halloween. We do it better than anybody in the world. And, and John said it. We, we have a science to it. But we want to reach out to the people who created it, who made it, who wrote it, who filmed it, who designed it themselves originally. And it took us a long time to bring Werewolf here. And it, it, I think it pays off. That, that time that it took gave us a lot of time to think about it. Um, and a lot of time to work with John to create it. And so it, yeah, it took a long time. Um, <laughs> but it was worth it. I think you'll see it tonight. Well, I think it also serves itself as well, from what John was saying, as far as what's going on in our current culture. And also fads, would you say, lend a lot to what the experience is going to be at a certain time. So as you guys are so great at doing, is projecting what a new fad or how the culture is changing. You've kind of, because I'm thinking back while you're answering that, on 14 and, and 7, it just seems like every time there's a Halloween Horror Night, some way, shape, or form, it fits the fad and the culture of what we're experiencing at that particular time. So you guys are like decades ahead of yourselves. Let's go into the center here. Yes, sir. No. <laughs> I've, I've been very lucky that I've made a number of films that are still playing. And, uh, you know, a movie, the only test of a movie, it's not contemporary reviews, it's not how much money it makes, it's time. So if you can watch a movie 30 years later and it's still entertaining you, that's, I'm delighted, I'm thrilled. Um, but no, I mean, I made for Universal a picture called Into the Night. You'll notice there's no Into the Night ride. <laughs> you know, I mean, that picture made no money, and people went, Michelle Pfeiffer, who? You know, it never, it's just gone. And that was a failure. But so, but I worked just as hard on that as I did on the successes. You never know. It's all about the zeitgeist and timing and luck. We've got a, I'm going to get to your question here in a second. We do have a, a Twitter question that we want to get to. This is for Laura. This is from Tyler Scott via Twitter. Um, can you give a little insight into the Bill and Ted show as it comes together in a pretty big part of Halloween Horror Nights as well? And we've talked about some of the great mazes and other concepts, but what about Bill and Ted? Uh, I'll take this one. Um, yeah, Bill and Ted, I think this is the 22nd year for that show. Uh, pop culture spoof show uh, makes fun of literally everything that's happened over the past year. Um, the one thing that we kind of put into the show this year uh, differently than what we've done in the past is it does have a horror element to it. It actually is a Halloween adventure this year. Um, it, it, there, it's, it's, it's on a camp with teenagers, um, celebrity teenagers that you may know of. Um, and so it has, a, it has a horror aesthetic this year. We haven't really done that with Bill and Ted in the past. Uh, so that was kind of a neat, neat item to kind of inject into the show this year. Um, but yeah, but it's still very much Bill and Ted. Um, and, uh, and I just love the fact that it's still Bill and Ted. That it's still those guys. Because I think nowadays, I think most people know them from our show rather than the movie at this point. <laughs> Although I hear, pray tell, there's, there's talk of a third, which would be frighteningly cool, maybe? <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's rocking and rolling. And uh, Jason Horn is the writer and director of that show this year. He, he, uh, he, he's done a really great job. I hope, hope you guys enjoy it tonight. Thank you for the answer. Hey, yes, Scotty, sir. Scotty, yes. we're going to take two more questions. Okay, sounds good. Do you have someone there that has a question with you? Or I'll just go to the audience again. Two more questions or what? <laughs> <laughs> 
I think we may be Press to conference of time. death. Uh, yes, ma'am, right here in the second row. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Absolutely, as far as, as far as hitting those touchstones in, within the slate. Um, I think we always try and at least do one or two mazes every year that, that kind of harken back to, to the tried and true era of horror. I'm a huge classic monster fan. That's what I grew, that's what I grew up on. Um, and at any time that we're able to, to inject the event with something that is, is in more of a classic sense that, that shows kind of where horror began and then you're able to kind of see a timeline in the event. Um, I think that's, that's important. I think it's also really cool that people who may have not seen the film in any given year that we're representing it in a more classic sense, it almost is a gateway. Like they'll experience the maze first and then discover, oh, I really want to kind of see what that was based on. And I'm sure there's kids and teenagers going through the mazes this year that may have never seen an American World of Money. This will be their first view into that, that, that realm. And they'll leave here and go, I, I, want, to, I want to see what what they adapted. I want to see how that worked in, in, in John's film. I uh, think that's really cool and I think it's important for the event to not only scare you, but I, this is geeky of me, I like to educate some people as well in, in horror. I think, that, I think that's important. I, I, want, I want to just say one thing that really does make you, this event special and it, Jim used the word passion and you used the word geek, but I have to tell you, these guys they really are passionate geeks. I mean, they really are. They're very excited about this stuff, and they really enjoy their work. And um, he wasn't kidding about the screens. We were walking. We were walking here. At, I don't know what we. What was it? We were passing where people were, were screaming in there. Oh, I think it was the kitchen. No, it was <laughs> one of the mazes. Uh, it was the cabin in the woods. We were walking. Yeah, I don't know. We were walking past. And these girls said, screaming out of there, and he was beaming, <laughs> beaming. I mean, and it, that you can't buy that. I'm serious. That kind of enthusiasm. I mean, it makes it special. Also, I want the people who work, here, who sign up for Halloween. How many? How many scared? What do you call them? Scared characters. How many? About a thousand. A thousand people come for minimum wage. You know. <laughs> 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 employees with full benefits. <laughs> we know that's not true. Oh, what is interesting? No, I'm very serious. What's interesting? What percentage of them, what percentage of them are repeat who come back? There's probably 90% of our characters that come back every year. Yeah, every year uh, in July, the first audition. We have a re big reunion audition, and every year it seems to grow, and, and every year more and more of our characters are coming back. So what's crazy is it used to take us all the way up till October to cast this entire event and keep it cast. Now we're cast by the second week of July. So it's pretty amazing. But it's that level of enthusiasm. It's, it's, they're really into it in a way that... It, you can't buy it. I mean, they, it's really an interesting thing. We tell them about it. The, there's a lawyer from Tampa. Yeah, in the past, yeah, we, uh, he, he has a practice, and um, I, I don't think he's working with us uh, the last couple. He's probably of years. in jail. <laughs> practice during the day and, and, and for, for many years he would take a vacation for two months from his practice come here and perform in the event and then go back to his day job uh, after two months so yeah I mean there, there are people that, that would never dream of doing something like this they end up catching that bug and wanting to, to scare scare people uh, for two months and, and come here and do it so yeah it's remarkable okay we've got time for one more question and we'll give it to the loudest screamer in the house that wants to ask a question Okay, up top there. Sir, go ahead with your question. She's your queen to be. <laughs> now, Landis, all right, man. There's certain movies that always connect us and hit us in the heart, man. We're right there in the remote. We've seen it a million times. Do you know, do you know Boondocks? <laughs> I know Boondocks. But I know many people who do. I've 
the comic strip and then the yes. animated show. Yes. Well, Aaron Magruder, young guy who, who does boom docs, <laughs> invited me to his wedding. And I thought, why am I being invited? Okay, sure. So we went to this very nice wedding. And I won't tell you who, but a famous African American actor came out and sang that song. <laughs> And she walked down the aisle. And I thought, man. Alright, so let's you know who is connected with us. What are the top two that you're like sitting there you've seen it a gazillion times? Which ones do you sit there and actually watch? Of oh, my films? Yeah, your movie. I don't watch my films. <laughs> I've seen them. <laughs> Oh, you mean of movies? Oh, okay. I hmm. That's a tough one because I have hundreds of favorite movies. There are certain movies that you know they, if you're turning channels and it's on TV, you just get like Godfather <coughs> Two. You just get sucked in. Goodfellas, you know. Wizard of Oz or King Kong. The original. I, you know, there are a lot there. You know what? I couldn't. I hate those top ten lists and stuff. I have too many. Films that I just love. You know what breaks my heart now is most people will see Lawrence of Arabia 2001 on their iPad. As a filmmaker, that kills me. <laughs> but I don't have. I don't honestly don't have a favorite. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex Diaz, <laughs> for your very energetic question and performance. Our teams will be calling your teams in the end. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for everybody?